this eight-year-old boy saved up $2,000 to buy his own antique half-size violin. A lady came into my shop to get a small violin repaired. What was amazing about the violin is, uh, first it was an old violin, um, but it's a half-size violin. It's quite unusual to have ha old half-size violins. And what's even more unusual about this violin, this violin was bought by an eight-year-old boy for $2,000, and he saved up all that money himself. That's just so amazing. I mean, he is so passionate. And uh, the, the neck broke out. And uh, well, that's, you know, these things happen. But the problem is that the neck has actually broken out, including the little button at the back here, the top part here, is actually part of the back of the instrument. I can't just glue the neck back in because that button at the back is actually part of what holds the neck into place. So I'm gonna to have to do a slightly different repair which involves fitting a type of dovetail, making a counter mold, and, and so it's quite an involved repair. And really the only way to repair it is to do this dovetail. I'm just so impressed. So he saved up all his like birthday money, he sold a lot of his Lego and uh, and other toys that he no longer played with. Now remember this kid is eight years old and ended up buying this violin which is just so amazing. I'm gonna start repairing this violin so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take off the back of the instrument. Okay I've got my knife, I got the instrument, I'm gonna start splitting it open. Uh, we all know how much fun it is to split open a violin. Okay. So this is opening up very nicely. There we go. That actually opened up beautifully. So this is the back of the instrument. So I'm going to dissolve the glue very slowly. I'm basically using metho, and it's not the metho that dissolves the glue, it's a metho that evaporates and creates cold in the process of doing that, and that attracts water into the join. You have to be very careful not to um, dissolve the varnish at the same time. I think I will lose some varnish when I glue it back together because I'm going to fit the neck to the right height. Uh, which it probably wasn't beforehand. Okay, so it actually came apart at the join, but I am um, nearly done here. So here it is. Now I have to glue that back onto here uh, as straight as I can, and then I have to make a counter mold. And if you don't know what a counter mold is, by the end of this video, you will. So I may as well glue this together now. Okay, that's glued together. Good morning. Well, it's actually nearly lunchtime. I uh, finally got the time to keep working on this little half-size violin. I'm just in the process of taking the clamps off. So I'm happy with the way this is glued up. So now um, I'm just going to give that a little wipe down and then I'm going to make a counter mold for this whole area because after that I will be cutting out a dovetail, so that'll be um, coming across here and here. So I'm actually going to cut out some of the original material of the instrument and then replace it with a new piece which is going to give this whole area the strength again, like the same amount of strength it would have had before. Just going to just give this a quick wipe down. So all the glue is wiped off now. And, uh, but I, I just want to make sure that all dries um, fully before I make a mold because if, if the varnish is even slightly wet, it could actually stick to the mold, which is not so good. Okay, it's a little bit later in the afternoon. I've had lunch 
and uh, I am just going to make a little mold for this area just to support it. Try and do this as quickly as possible. Here we go. So I, the, for the mold, I literally use just what we call builder's bog or car bog. It's just a fairly simple way of making a good mold that's strong enough. Of course, I don't ever, ever apply it directly to the violin. That would be totally silly. So I'm just gonna mix it directly on here. It's just less waste that way. I usually like it a bit more runny than this, but um, I think that'll be fine. Just trying to level this out a bit now. I basically put a uh, glad wrap over the top that separates the, the builder's bog from the instrument. Stretch the glad wrap as much as possible so I don't have any folds. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so now I'll just put this on here carefully. I'm going to press this down. I have to be careful because of course this is really freshly glued and I don't want to unglue it in the process. I'll put on a couple of clamps. As I'm tightening it, you should see some of the builder's bog squeezing out the sides. So it'll just be like that. Uh, I've got to let that dry. While I do that, I'm going to prepare the piece of timber I'm going to fit into here. Now, normally you'd probably fit a piece of timber that has a join in the middle. And the reason I want to put the join is to really make it invisible for this from the side here. But uh, this is a cheaper violin and not putting the join in actually strengthens it, the area more. So I'm not going to do that. So I'll just find a, a piece of maple that fits exactly and uh, I'll fit that to the back. Okay, so I found a little bit a uh, piece of, of maple that I'm going to use that will work in nicely. It literally just needs to be big enough to work. Okay, well that's got the rough shape happening. It's just the end of a, a, a violin, like violin timber. Now I can take these two clamps off already. There we go. And then I'll move these ones all the way to the edge here. And then I'm going to mark in where I'm going to fit this dovetail. Now I'm just going to use my trusty Japanese saw. So I've clamped this down firmly to give me a good area, like a, a area to work on. Now I can use a lot of strength uh, without worrying about doing any damage. And I'm basically cutting this back to half of the thickness of the back now. So half of, so half of the thickness will be new timber, half of the thickness will be the original timber. So I've gone down one millimeter and uh, I want to go down maybe a little bit, about half a millimeter more. The whole thickness of the back right there is three millimeters. So I want to go halfway in. Now I'm going to use my file for just the final, like the finer finish. It's getting very close now. I'm going to do a tiny bit of chalk fitting at the end just to make sure I'm 100% happy. So easiest thing to do here is just to put some chalk all over this and then see how evenly the chalk is distributed on this little section here. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more fitting and then it's time to glue this dovetail in. Okay, we're pretty much good to go here. Uh, so I'm just going to clamp everything back into, uh, like the instrument, back into the mold. Now I'm just going to glue this piece in. Alrighty. So this is just going to glue overnight. And then tomorrow I can take the clamps off and I can cut this back. And then I can glue the back back onto the instrument. Okay, so it's the following evening and um, 
this will most definitely be dry by now. Taken the clamps off and we have an unusually shaped piece attached to the violin. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the saw and I'm going to cut um, like saw as much as I can off. Uh, it's kind of a fairly fast way of getting rid of a lot of timber. It's all about just getting the timber down as quickly as possible without damaging, you know, <laughs> without going too far or damaging anything. I'm fairly keen to glue the back back onto the instrument today because I still have to fit the neck and my goal is to get the uh, instrument back to the player next week. So now it's ready for the plane. So the plane, uh, it, this is just leveling this out so that, uh, that everything's totally level here. Then I just got to finish off this little bit and uh, then I'm pretty much ready to glue the back onto the instrument again. Okay, so now I'm getting, I've, I've just rough cut around here and I'm getting very close to this being totally flush. If I put a ruler over the top of it, it is nearly there. It is very, very, very close. It's just a tiny little step. And of course I want to get rid of that. Uh, but first I'm just going to carve this little area out. Okay, that's that is very level. I am just going to check it next to the instrument. Yes, that's fitting beautifully. So I'm pretty much ready to glue the back um, onto the instrument again. Okay, being a small instrument, I'm going to be have to be a little creative with the clamps uh, because these clamps are made for a full size violin. But uh, I figured out a way that they will fit on. Now um, it's not the it's just the whole size of the instrument that's that's an issue so i'm just uh yeah i'm creatively gonna work around it you'll see what i'm gonna do time to put on the glue all righty yeah. this is the fun part so like i said it's gonna be slightly creative okay that just has to dry and uh tomorrow i can fit the neck which is exciting. One thing I will do is I'll polish the area just under the uh, fingerboard here because how else are you going to clean under there? It's the next day and the violin is glued up and together in one piece so now I can take the clamps off and the next step will be to fit the neck. I'm also just going to polish underneath the fingerboard because when else do I get a chance to do that easily? Okay, let's have a look. Hopefully this all glued nicely. Okay, there we go. That has been doubled now, as we like to call it. So my next step will be to fit the neck. It still has the strings on it. So right now the neck is extremely loose. So I'm going to have to... Um, put some little slithers of timber either side before I fit it. Getting very close now. Okay, so I've had a few clients and uh, but they've all left. Um, had someone trying out cellos, uh, picking up a bowery here, picking up a viola, lots of stuff. But now I am uh, going to glue this neck in. So I've got a uh, big long clamp ready that goes from end to end. Apart from that, uh, just a clamp from the top. And uh, that's all that I need. I've got my two little pieces to go in. I'm all ready to go. Let's do these two pieces first. Two. I did polish underneath the uh, fingerboard in case you're wondering. I snuck that one in uh, in between clients so you didn't get to see that. Okay. 
Okay, I'm happy with that. So that just needs to dry till tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. The glue of the neck has now dried. Whew. A lot of glue leaked, leaked out. So there's a lot of glue here that I have to soak off. I think we're going to use the original bridge. It's like not even a quarter of a millimeter different. So I'll leave this bridge. It'll save the parents some money. Because I did think I might have to do a new bridge, but um, yeah, I won't do that. See all the little bits of timber that are sticking out. So I'm going to very carefully cut around them. Then I'm going to soak the glue off as well. Okay, I'm ready to just sand. I'm going to use fairly fine sandpaper. I don't need really rough sandpaper. Now, if this was a really expensive instrument, I would um, cut just that strip in the middle and leave the varnish intact uh, on the button and on the neck. But, uh, you know, this, this is a much cheaper instrument and this is a bit quicker and easier to do and it'll look just as good. Okay, I'm just going to get a bit of cold water and just put it on the glue here. So. Alright, that's had about 10 minutes or so to soak, uh, so I can just wash that off now. Alright, that's got all the glue off. You know I can just about put strings on the violin already so uh, it can settle in. I just realized I took the whole back off so I've still got to wash the glue off the whole rest of the body here. Totally forgot about that. I have to wait to do that to put the strings on, but I can retouch all this while the strings are on. The boy will be super happy that this is done. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and go on lunch. <sighs> I'm back from lunch and uh, yes, sorry I didn't show you my lunch today. It was Vietnamese, very good. Vietnamese salads, they're just the best. Uh, so I'm just gonna wet this with cold water and let it soak after that. Where I glued the back onto the instrument, there's little bits of glue left and I'm just soaking them with cold water. I'll wash them off with hot water in about um, probably 10 minutes time. It won't need to soak very long at all. Yes, and uh, I might, I'm just gonna sand this area uh, up the top here one more time. It's been 10 minutes. So I'm using hot water now, just cleaning off the old glue. Great, that's pretty much it. I've just got to let that dry now. Uh, I'm gonna let that dry for a while because then I'll be polishing in there and retouching. It's the next day, I had a really busy day so I didn't really get to, uh, to doing much. This is being picked up soon, uh, as in tomorrow. So, um, I'm going to get the strings on and then I'm going to do the final retouching. So it's a little bit to do still on the back here. Yeah, so it's a bit of retouching to do but, and some polishing and things like that. But that's all um, coming along very well. So I'm just going to put the strings on now. Yeah. The moment where I get to see whether we can stick with the original bridge. It's a little bit less than half a millimeter out. I think I'm going to leave it. And if he has a lot of problems with the E string, we'll do the bridge later. But uh, that can save them some money. Especially seeing that he saved up the uh, $2,000 to buy this violin. That's pretty impressive. Well, I've got it together and uh, I'm going to do the rest tomorrow. Today I've just got to finish retouching this area and, uh, and the violin's actually going to get picked up later today. It's so exciting. So I'm just doing a tiny bit more sanding here. Just gonna make this little piece, these little areas just look like aged wood. Just using a very light dye. 
Now I've let that dry a little bit, so I'm just gonna put some, just the first layer of varnish on there. It's a 300 year old varnish recipe. Now I'm just gonna keep layering up the varnish, like the first, first sort of varnish literally just soaked in. So I can almost immediately put on another layer of varnish. I need to make sure that it stops soaking in. And then I'm gonna start adding color to the varnish after, you know, like this is very close to not soaking in anymore. So I'm just gonna add a bit of color to the varnish. Now this is not a, you know, not a $100,000 violin. So it just gotta look good. It doesn't, you know, I'm not gonna spend hours and hours matching it so carefully that you can't see anything. But I'll get, you know, I have to do a bit faster because, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for pe economic sense for people to pay for hours of work on an instrument like this but it's still a nice instrument and I want to make sure that uh, that it looks really good first coat is on and now I'm gonna put a some cover varnish some clear varnish over the top and I'm just gonna keep doing that till I get very close with the color so we're, we're slowly starting to get there also, while I'm there, I'm going to just polish um, around the edges um, where I've put the back uh, onto the instrument again. It looks much neater. You can't really tell that the instrument's been apart. Uh, yeah, so I've just polished in here, just just in the in the little join between the back and the sides. So now I've just got to get some clear varnish on here. Gonna let that dry. And then uh, I just got to uh, polish that and uh, give the violin a good tryout. Make sure it's all sounding good. Um, it's a bit of a tough one. It's uh, it's got a bit of a small sound. Um, I mean, usually smaller instruments do have smaller sounds. I've heard some that uh, that have a much much more projection. So I just want to get it going as well as possible. It's time for the final polish. How exciting. I'm not polishing the entire instrument because that's not why the instrument, uh, I got the instrument here, but I will be polishing just the area that I worked on. So first of all, I've got to put this chin rest back on. A little bit of sanding, and then I'll just polish everything and we can take a look. I love polishing, it makes everything look so good at the end. So the eight-year-old boy bought this violin on a an online website in Germany. Um, it arrived, the button at the tops came out, uh, including the neck fell out, including the button. So I did a dovetail button graft and I'm just doing the final touches of this repair. So I'm very pleased with the way that it's looking. Um, hope you guys can see as well. So it's all one piece again, which is great. And I'm, I'm very happy with it. So I'm looking forward to see what the kid thinks of it. Everything's finished. I'm super happy with it. Just gonna try the instrument. <laughs> Yeah, the sound post isn't quite right. I just could adjust it a little bit. Okay, I have one tiny bit of a polish over and we're good. I'm gonna do that out here. So the clients are actually waiting outside, but this is exciting. Yeah, so come on in. You've probably seen this before. Does it look bigger on YouTube or is it about the right size? <laughs> Does it bigger on YouTube, buddy? <laughs> so I've fixed your violin for you. Um, you know how it was all broken off at the back. I actually made something like a new bit underneath. Do you want, are you going to try it? Are you? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Playing really well. 
Are you happy with the way it's working? Oh, that's good. Do you practice a lot? Yeah, I thought you might. Thank you so much. No worries at all. So how amazing was that? I mean, this eight-year-old saved up all his money to buy himself a beautiful violin. I mean, the enthusiasm is, you know, like it's, I find that so inspiring. And, you know, that's what I enjoy about my work, like meeting these people, meeting people like you who are super enthusiastic string players and musicians. And it doesn't mean, you know, you don't have all have to be a Yesha Heifetz or a, you know, some kind of famous players. Um, it's all about having fun on the instrument. When you're having fun, that shows itself in your playing and it just makes it so much more special. So I hope you like this video. I hope you like the journey. Keep playing music that you love and keep making beautiful music. See you guys next time. Remember to like, subscribe and hit the little bell. Okay, see you next time and thanks for watching.